Okay, oxyanion nomenclature. So basically this is naming oxyanions. All right, so what are oxyanions? These are basically just polyatomic ions that have one or more oxygen atoms, so at least one oxygen atom, but it can be more, most often is, plus another nonmetal atom in that polyatomic. And these guys usually have charges of negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So let's look at a few examples of oxyanions. So this first one here is called carbonate. So we can see that here's our nonmetal element other than oxygen, so carbon, and then oxygen here. And so basically we have the name of the element, or the root in some cases, but the name of the element, and then 8, telling us that oxygen is present in that polyatomic ion. So if we look at the second one, nitrite, then the same situation exists. So here's nit, so nit from nitrogen, and then we have oxygen, so nitrite. All right, now, you notice we have an 8 versus an ite. We're going to talk about that and how to determine which one we should put on there. But both of these guys tell us that oxygen is present in the compound. All right, so let's look at this last guy. So sulfur is the other nonmetal element. And so we're going to take the root of that name, sulf, and then the 8 for oxygen. So let's learn how to do that. Okay. So here are our general steps. So we are going to first write the root of the name of the non-oxygen element. So we did that when we were naming ionic compounds, and we're just going to continue doing that. And then we're going to add the "-ate or "-ite suffix. And I'm going to explain how to do that in the next couple of slides. Okay, so let's again look a little bit at more at these examples. So here's nitrate. So nitrogen is the non-oxygen element. We're going to remove the ogen and add 8, and we're going to get nitrate. On the previous slide, we had sulfate. Okay, now this one is sulfite. And sulfur is the non-oxygen element, so we're going to remove er, okay, and take the root, which is just sulf, and then we're going to add ite. And so it'll be sulfite. Okay, now, there will often be more than one oxyanion involving a given element. And so the difference is going to be the number of oxygen atoms bonded to it. So for example, let's look at these pairs. So here's nitrite, okay, and here's nitrate. So both of them involve nitrogen. They just, this guy has two oxygens, this guy has three, okay. Let's look at the next one, sulfite, okay, sulfur involved along with three oxygens, and sulfate, sulfur with four oxygens. Now notice on all of these, both pairs, the charge doesn't change, just the number of oxygens. So the charge will stay the same on that polyatomic. Okay, so let's go ahead and look for the pattern in these names, okay? Now here's the ite version. So here's nitrite, two oxygens. Here's nitrate, three oxygens. Okay? Look at the next one. Sulfite, three oxygens. And sulfate, four oxygens. Okay? Let's look at one more. So here's chlorite with only two oxygens and chlorate with three. Okay, so what we're seeing here is basically the one of the pair that has fewer oxygens gets that ite ending, okay? And the one with more oxygens is going to get the ate ending. All right, so fewer oxygens, ite, more oxygens, ate. Okay, now let's look at chlorite and chlorate. Here, okay, so these two guys do follow our pattern, two oxygens versus three oxygens, so the ite anion has two, and the chlorate has three, so that's one more than this guy, okay? Now, it turns out that for chlorine-based oxyanions, it turns out that there are two more anions. Yes, there are. So one of them has one less oxygen than the ite version, okay? So that's 
hypochlorite, okay, so he only has one oxygen, and it also turns out that this guy can actually bond up to four oxygens, and so now we have to give it a different name, and so this is perchlorate, okay? Now, one thing that you should notice here, see here's chlorite, and here's chlorite, okay? This guy has one more oxygen than this guy, all right? So we indicate that by adding the prefix hypo in front of chloride, okay? So you take chloride, when, when you have one less oxygen, we're just going to add the prefix hypo, and everything else stays the same, okay? So the one with fewer oxygens than ite anion has the prefix hypo added to the beginning of the name, okay? Now, the same pattern exists for chlorate versus perchlorate, except for now we're going to look at adding an additional oxygen from the, the 8 version of the anion, okay? So this is chlorate, okay? So we're just going to take that and we're going to put it down here, and then because we've added one more oxygen, now we're going to call it perchlorate, okay? So chlorite, chlorate is three oxygens, perchlorate is four, okay? So comparing the 8 versions, the one with more oxygens than the 8 anion has a prefix per added at the beginning of the name, okay? So we still start with this pair, ite versus 8, okay? And then now we're going to name hypochlorite relative to chlorite and perchlorate relative to chlorate. All right, so let's have a little quiz here. So pause the presentation and give this a try. Okay, so now I wasn't trying to trick you, okay? Okay, so these are two halogen-based polyatomic ions, and I gave you the two most common ones, okay? So we have bromine involved in this guy, so this is bromite, and because I gave you this one, that's how you could tell that it was the ite version, because this is one less oxygen than this guy, okay? So bromate here, bromine, and then cut off that ene ending, add 8, and then when we have one less than the 8 version, then it's gonna, we're just going to change that A to an I and have bromite. So you kind of need to name those two guys as a pair. All right, let's look at the next two. Okay, so now here's phosphate. How did we get that? So we're going to take phosphorus, we're going to cut off the urus, okay, and then we're going to add the 8. So phosphate, and then finally, here we have carbonate, and we saw this at the beginning of the presentation, but now we know where it came from. So carbon is the only element name that I can think of off the top of my head where we keep the whole name. So carbon, and then we just add the eight that tells us oxygen is present. Okay, so now, here is a series of oxyanions. So go ahead and name these guys. Pause the presentation and give it a try. Okay, so I'm going to start by naming the two middle ones because I know that this guy right here is going to be iodate, okay? This one's going to involve a prefix. This guy's going to involve a prefix. So I want to start with these two center guys, okay? So iodine, so we're going to cut off the ine and we're going to add the 8, telling us that oxygen is present. So iodate, okay? One less oxygen in this guy, so that's the ite guy. So now we have iodite. All right, so let's do the other two. Let's remind ourselves. Okay, so this guy has one less oxygen than this guy, so we're going to add the prefix hypo to it. So hypoiodite, it's kind of a mouthful. And then for this guy, so you see how he has one more oxygen than iodate. We're just going to add that prefix per, per iodate.